Welcome to my f favorite segment on the flip side. This is Fast Five, where our four panelists weigh in on five separate topics. Let's get started. MetLife has dropped Snoopy. Ron, what do you think? Man, I'm a Snoopy fan. I, I, I hate to see that happen. Uh, with the blimp, you know, over sporting events, it seems like that's something that uh, that's going to be very difficult uh, in the future not to see. To not see Snoopy there with MetLife, it's something as soon as you saw it, you knew what was coming, what was coming. Uh, you know, when, when, the, when Gilbert Gottfried stopped being the voice of the Aflac duck, <laughs> I mean, it's just like the duck lost its, uh, its, its, its being. It just now those commercials aren't what they used to be. So those little uh, Snoopy and, and the Aflac duck brought so much attention to a product, but everything outlives its usefulness. Yeah, uh, you know, I absolutely agree. You know, it, this is a case where, so you and I, we know who Snoopy is. Jim knows who Snoopy is. A lot of the millennials aren't as familiar with Snoopy. All right, they might, they might know Snoopy as, oh, that's that cartoon we watch every year at Christmas time or something like that, you know. So in this case, MetLife, what they're doing, they're, gonna, they're trying to do a rebranding, and I think it's probably so they can target millennials a little bit better. They originally uh, brought in Snoopy to make insurance seem a little more friendly towards people because everybody was like insurance yeah. is all cold and, you know, horrible. You know, it's actually still cold and horrible. But, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's a rebranding strategy. We'll see if it works. All right. So first we had nine planets, then we had eight planets. Now they're saying we might have nine planets again, but not Pluto. Pluto's still a planet, dag on it. Well, not, a, not uh, according now, to some. You know, I mean, so first of all, this is a theoretical planet, okay? This, this, the supposed ninth plan, uh, planet now is just, they're like, okay, well, this is probably what explains why uh, the solar system is on a slight tilt compared to the axis of the sun. Uh, they estimate that the planet is probably about ten times the size of Earth, probably, a, I'm guessing, a gas giant, and one year rotation for this planet would be equal to 17,000 years of, our, of Earth years. So this, is a, this planet is just Completely theoretical at this point. No one has been able to spot it with a telescope or anything. So, I don't know. I think the jury's still out. Well, maybe we can walk down the street after this is over to where the planetarium is and get an explanation in there what they <laughs> think. So, uh, they just, they just uh, updated the planetarium. Looks yeah. like they're going to have to start over again. Yeah, right? I mean, right? uh, what, what an experience that used to be to go in there and it. listen to... Uh, to what those uh, folks did. Uh, yeah. Speaking of experiences, Netflix examines uh, Barack Obama before he came, became president in their new release called Barry. Ron, what say you? I've yet to figure out exactly what it meant. I looked at it. I looked at the president in his early years. I looked at it when these girls were really small and they were carrying them and he was running for the Senate. And I've yet to really understand what it is that they're pointing out that we haven't already seen. So, um, Ken, uh, do you know more than, than what meets the I, eye on this particular I thing by yeah, Netflix? Yeah, I, I really suspect this is actually a sequel to National Treasure in which they're attempting to locate his, his real birth certificate. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, it, I'm guessing it's just a biography. I mean... Netflix is is trying to create original programming. Good good on them, you know. Hey, if if they can get more subscribers through original programming, not have to worry about buying movies from studios, great. Well, one of the things that that I found interesting when I, I saw in one of the segments that the president was talking about his name, Barack, mm -hmm. and about Hussein, and they were talking about when they when they were named that and what Barack actually meant and how that would, that it didn't matter what your name was, that was the ideas that should come right. from you that determine whether or not you were good or not and not somebody's name 
as has been given to him. So it's right. maybe something positive will come out of what they want to do coming from somebody other than Michael Moore. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's switch to an, a rather interesting story. And you know, they say that when your brand is perfected, then they, they call your product, for example, Kleenex instead of, instead of facial tissue. Well, in Hagerstown, there is one brand that is absolutely perfected, and that is Crumpy's Donuts. Um, they've been here since 1934, and believe it or not, and I've lived here my entire life, and the, for the first time this past Saturday night, I went to Crumpy's and stood in line to get my donuts as they were fresh, off the, fresh out of the fryer. Um, Crumpy's was robbed back on October 13th. Two armed uh, gunmen walked in to the donut shop and robbed them of an undisclosed amount of cash. And um, fans of Crumpy's created a GoFundMe account to reimburse the business for the money that was lost. Ron, what do you think about that? It shows you the value of Crump the value of Crumpy's Donuts as a corporate entity, as a corporate citizen, as a citizen of the of the city of Hagerstown, and as a supporter of so many activities in Hagerstown. And so, they're, the people that are their customers are saying, "Gosh, let's do something for them." Yeah. And out of something like this comes the strength of a community. Yeah. And it's uh, it's something to behold that. It's something positive happening. Gosh, we've had so many bad things yeah. that's happened in the last year, and and I, well, we got two more weeks, and uh, hopefully things can get into an order that that people begin talking to each other in civ civil ways, and husband and wives, and boyfriends and girlfriends, and everybody begins yeah. to talking because of the divided nature. Of, of national uh, news, so uh, yeah, I think it was a good thing what the the, the, I agree. the patrons did. Uh, I absolutely agree. You know, it, how great is it that we've got this local business that is so loved by the community that somebody actually starts a a campaign to make up for the money that they lost because they got robbed. All right, now keep in mind the the money that was actually stolen from them during the robbery that will be covered by their insurance potential, but the additional money that they're trying to raise here is to make up for the lost, lost sales business, right. from people not being able to go to Crumpies that night. Right. And you know what? It is packed every single night that you go. I love Crumpies. I am absolutely thrilled that we have such a wonderful community that's willing to do this. All right, last topic, and we're about out of time. Actually, we're more than out of time. EPA, they say they waited, uh, some say they waited too long to warn about the Flint water danger, Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Ken, what say you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go libertarian here for a second and say that the EPA is a huge problem in that, you know, I mean, look at that mine spill that uh, the EPA was trying to, to work on cleaning up that one mine and they ended up turning an entire river orange, okay? Uh, the EPA here locally uh, for the longest time, the city of Hagerstown had an, a, a waiver agreement with the EPA for some of the contaminant levels in the drinking water being too high. And for sewage going and directly right. into uh, Antietam. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, I want to say that, you know, the EPA is not doing their job. Why are they being funded? Exactly. Ron? He gave the answer that I thought he would. Uh, and that's exactly what I see it. I see it's political. I see the the mayor and and the, and the town council of Flint, Michigan, decide to cut corners. They decide not to fund yeah. uh, the water. They decided to bypass what they were doing before, and they didn't have everything done right. So consequently, the prudent thing to do now is for a certain political party <laughs> to blame the EPA because the EPA didn't, didn't act soon enough. It's all politics. Um, we know what happened in, sure. in Flint, Michigan, but now it's become, again, a political dog whistle poli political issue. And Ron, you, how many times have you heard dog whistle in this election? Uh, several yeah. from you. And I'm not <laughs> against the EPA. I just think they seriously need to be reformed. And you'll get the last word on that. Stay tuned because coming up is Last Call. We'll be back in three minutes.